to jump straight into this because this has been the talk of my side of the internet and something that I kind of have been covering to some relative consistency over the years but I kind of pulled off in the last few months whatnot because it just got boring um there's only so much you know you can there's only so much of that content you can just watch and keep kind of subjecting yourself to um just for the clicks and the views it's not worth it personally for me so that's not what I, what what's not why I started this thing for I didn't start this podcast for views or clicks I started it because I just wanted to have people to talk to because I don't necessarily have any real friends <laughs> do you know what I mean so if I could share some of the stuff that I'm into with the with people online who maybe might view it and also might contribute and also might view and also might whatever that's a good thing but it wasn't never like okay i'm gonna do it for views first so when i did happen to stumble upon the t k universe as a fan first of all let's start that from before i started off as a fan i was a big fan of brendan i thought he was really good on joe rogan early the early times i thought especially during the fight companion so it was always incredibly funny him and brian Callen had a good rapport you were kind of rooting for him as well because at the time you know it was kind of being made you were kind of realizing in real time that dana white was an absolute scumbag of a guy and to see brendan kind of standing up to him and the ufc when in terms of the rebook deal you just kind of went to back him you kind of went to he kind of had the underdog feel about him about what he was trying to do in terms of you know um trying to push for increase in fighters pay um trying to push for fighters to have their own sponsorship and be able to have their brands on their shorts and all that good stuff blah 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 the rebook deal of course good douche all of that but i did start from being a fan of t5k and then i'm not sure what happened i can't pinpoint it in terms of the precise moment where i kind of was like nah this isn't for me anymore but it might have coincided with me finding no you know what actually happened i think i found the t fight case subreddit the final case subreddit the greatest subreddit in the world i think i might have found that subreddit just as i was getting a bit disillusioned with the podcast because i think that's what happens maybe yeah, it happens twofold either you like a show that much no it doesn't happen twofold because i've never i've never went on the wire subreddit i don't care i love the wire it's an amazing show i just move on i think when you're like a bit like when you watch a show and you're like hmm was that crap or am i just or am i uh being over critical was that a bit rubbish was that a bit of a letdown you then start to look online and see if people agree with you right and then you find communities people like saying yeah this is terrible that's something happened with game of thrones i don't know was it like season five people started to get a little bit like mm, this is a bit this is going a bit weird isn't it I think I had the same thing with the fight the kid. And then I stumbled across the subreddit. I actually went on there, I think I'm pretty sure, started defending Brendan. Like, oh, you guys are being too mean. Move on, let him alone. I don't know. I think I started with that. And then as you kept watching the content, you know, slowly but surely, of course, because, you know, it's just, it's all, I've, I've, I've always said, especially when it comes to people that do this stuff online, content creators and influencers, you usually dictate people's reaction to you for the most part you can't control all of it but i think for the most part the overwhelming consensus about you from people that enjoy or content or whatever is usually i think the truth for the most part there are people of course are going to go over the overboard but i think it's usually the truth and it's usually stuff that you've done and of course over time brendan kind of you know basically let his true kind of show and just came up like a bit of a prick and i just stopped listening to it and i'm a kind of person who just stops listening and moves on but then over time, of course, you know, I invested so many of, of my years of my life listening and watching that content. It just started to piss me off when I started to hit C and see certain things. I'd comment on my channel. I'd make some videos about Brendan, make some Brendan videos about Brian Kellen, about that whole LA comedian circle group of people. And then over time, I started to get a little bit disillusioned with it. Um, I didn't want to have my channel just to be like, you know, a place where I'm going in and kind of attacking these guys or her, whatever. That's not even what I was getting it for. I'm a fan. Um, when they do something stupid i'll just comment on it because they're people that i kind of view their content and they're people that you would kind of um, deem to be celebrities in some way shape or form so you know part of living a celebrity life is you know if somebody if you secure a multi-million dollar deal someone will make a video on that and if you do something stupid like drive drunk you know uh, get caught driving um drink driving whatever you'd also get made a video on that too i don't i think it's you know they both kind of exist on the same spectrum it is what it is but for whatever reason, it appears like Brendan is incredibly thin-skinned and doesn't like it when people make videos about him. So much so that he's going after this um, YouTuber that I'm aware of called, uh, was it Super Saiyans? Is it, it was the original name? Was it Saiyans Entertainment? And then he's got another channel now that he started that's also been taken down called Uniques. And essentially, from what I can gather online, it looks like um, the video that he made on Brendan allegedly cheating on his wife is what has kind of sparked this i don't think so because i think in general 
this guy, Saiyan's guy, he definitely picked up the slack that I didn't pick up. The stuff that he was doing, I would never do in terms of reporting on every single little thing that was going on in that world. I just don't care enough about those guys like that. Um, I catch what I can catch whenever I can catch it. But, you know, who cares? But um, I guess in the eyes of someone like a Brendan who generally thinks um, people who have anything negative to say about him are bottom feeder, kind of like less than human, um, not worth your time, neck beard, you know, cheeto finger people this is this is this sh we shouldn't be surprised right this is this is the opposite of uh, you, you'd be surprised we shouldn't be surprised that he would have done this because brendan's always had a very um bad impression or negative opinion of people who don't like his content or don't like him as a person which i've never really understood because i've always thought in my head that someone like a brendan he actually would have a lot to gain by kind of leaning into the hate a bit or by maybe making a joke of it a little bit that would actually be something that would actually you know, for somebody who cares about money a lot and ticket sales and all that sort of stuff that would actually work in his favor more than this kind of like oh you guys don't matter you're homeless it's like a homeless person commenting on my comedy um you know you don't fuck chicks like all these weird things that he kind of pulls out of his ass in terms of to kind of um make himself feel better about his lackluster career but in general it doesn't matter in general it shouldn't really matter right the guy's a multi-millionaire he's got a family he has a wife he drives amazing cars he's got great friends like it shouldn't matter what some random person on the internet says about you and the, the fact that they don't like your content because clearly some people do clearly some people are willing i don't know why they're willing to pay hard-earned money to come and see you perform on stage and you know do a routine that's probably I don't know that probably has enough jokes in it to kind of fill the flipping toilet or whatever right like terrible 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 stand-up like objectively terrible but people don't mind it and if that's the case and again I'm a big believer in letting the market decide it's why I'm not really a big fan of counterculture in that way right because it's general counterculture for the most part is like a small select group of people telling you hey you don't have the right to have a career we've decided you don't get a job we decided you have to sit down we decided you get fired no I don't like that I'm a big believer and let the market decide the market decides that what you did was so egregious that not gonna you know buy your stuff or view your thing cool then you have to die a slow death but you know the industry insiders or gatekeepers don't have to decide that and clearly customers fans of brendan have decided that he's good enough for merch they like him enough to go to see his show they like him enough to wait view his video blah 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 so clearly he's got a fan base there so i don't know why this is a thing i really don't know i can't for my life i can't for the life of me kind of figure it out and to make matters even worse now he's got people like the quartering after him right who is kind of like you know somebody that's well known within the pod the youtube space or the podcast space, the youtube space um somebody who i kind of you know had gone off as well in terms of watching his content i think you know watching a million videos about brie larson there's only so much videos about brie larson one man can watch and in general i don't care about you know culture war stuff as much as he, he seems to but one thing that you can't begrudge him is that he does really um go after and kind of have the back of small youtubers when stuff like this happens he's always in their corner and he has a somewhat um autistic level of de attention no? autistic level of kind of a dedication to this sort of thing so he's going to see this through until the bitter end he's not going to let this one go so the fact that he's kind of um brendan has kind of you know come across uh the quarter in sort of vision or attention is a real bad thing going forward because if anything this is essentially the barbara streisand effect in in all you know in full effect basically this is it this is what we're seeing in real time um in, a, in an effort to kind of conceal hide and do away with any dissenting voices it's only going to bring more eyes to whatever that person was saying about him in the first place and it's going to reveal other things too off the back of that and if you think i'm joking no here's a post courtesy of the fire and the kid um one of these i think was a set designer i guess or something along those kind of lines um said the following on the fire on the quarter in quarter so on the quarter in twitter, twitter that he put up right he replied underneath him and said 
um, this guy called Alex D said, oh, this guy hired me um, to design his podcast studio, never paid me for my work and then stole my designs. He's a scumbag. Don't let him get away with this. Um, the top is my concept design for Brendan Schaub, which he and his cronies engaged me for. They ghosted me and stopped responding to my emails for payments. Then a few weeks later, a buddy sends me this screenshot of his new set ripping off my idea. So essentially, this guy designs podcast studios. He sends a brief or an idea. They go through a consultation. I'm assuming if you're a designer, you know, even if you don't design decide to go with the idea you have to pay somebody for their time for basically you know uh sitting down and specking out an idea putting together some sheets from some kind of concepts or whatnot this is what you do and you'd imagine this is a standard procedure especially for somebody who talks so you know boldly about creators and wanting to pay people for their work and stuff to do this is quite a scummy move and don't get me wrong the set itself isn't the most original idea in the world but still it's fairly close to what the set the guy designed like sketched out as a plan for the final kids fairly close to what they eventually ended up going for and then obviously they ended up changing that because you know brendan good douched um what's his name malik and then you know this whole thing had to change over time but this is what happens you go after one person you try and silence them and then all these other people who have been wronged by you who didn't really feel the need to maybe come out and say nothing or maybe felt that it might be career repercussions if they do come out repercussions eh? if they do come out and say something about you have now got courage now because everyone's attacking you to come out and say hey yeah this guy is a piece of shit yeah this guy is a scumbag like that's what essentially does happen going forward um and i just can't for the life of me figure out why brendan thought this was a good idea this is legitimately one of the dumbest things he's ever done and another thing that's really really incredible to kind of keep in mind here is that off the back of this lawsuit because i think um before the video i would have played the video but unfortunately unique channels got taken down um he mentioned in the lawsuit or no, someone pointed out in a lawsuit that the address for thick boy is registered to address someone in colorado so people are maybe um hypothesizing that that might be his dad's house or whatever it may be right but it's funny because one of the other unredeeming um, facts of is you know traits of brendan he lies or just embellishes the, the the story or whatever just unnecessarily just to make himself look better but then actually the lies and the kind of arrogance and that pompous attitude and that you can't tell me nothing all that sort of stuff is what people it's what turns people off of him and he's never really kind of realized that. and i don't understand it and it's like this one's a good example it's like most likely from what i can surmise the uh, registering your business in another state is maybe a, a kind of a tax thing right you maybe want to get well, you maybe don't want to pay as much tax so it's kind of a clever thing to maybe register your company in a state that isn't whatever okay but in another sense this all could also could be evidence that most likely his dad's an investor in the company that he's got now thick boy studios and the whole narrative that he was kind of trying to paint was that he was this scrappy guy who decided to leave showtime off his own volition which obviously wasn't true or what i don't think it's true and he decided to then put his own money into starting his own network um and kind of you know taking ownership of his own career instead of going to the big networks and stuff in order to kind of boost him no one believed that because no one believed that he would willingly walk away from a pretty decent salary at showtime and a pretty easy job where he didn't do any research or homework on any of the fights or the cards or anything going on on that week that he was commentating on he just reacted to kind of news that you know chin basically gathered up that morning no one knew, no one believed that he just would willingly walk away from that so the fact that he would embellish a story anyway doesn't make any sense because the actual truth isn't that bad either like i got fired so what everyone gets fired my dad's helping me out and investing some money in it cool that's what you should be doing if your dad's got some cash and he's you know it's and he and he doesn't mind helping his son that is an actual blessing to be able to have that in your life to be able to have somebody that can support you that shouldn't be something that you hide or you embellish or you try and make it seem like you're just kind of you know upstart guy plucky um you're on your own if you're against a man you clearly got help and it's okay to have help but it's this whole thing he does the same thing with joe rogan everyone everyone would say for the most part would say yes this guy would never have had the career he's had now without the joe rogan cosign we can all say that let's be completely honest especially the level that he's at now but we can't say he can he would never have a career no for sure he definitely made the most out of his relationship with Brent, with joe rogan cool but let's also tell the truth and say without this relationship with joe rogan you wouldn't be the person that you are now at the level that you're at now no way shape if just just in terms of followers we can all say for sure for followers if he wasn't a joe rogan one of joe rogan's kind of highest reoccurring guests he wouldn't have as many followers as he does on social media even the social media followers aren't even legit but imagine he wouldn't have as many as he does at the moment but then even that he lies about so it's just a constant so 
circle and barrage of lies and embellishment that I've never really understood. But I guess it's just one of those things that when you're that person, um, when you're that kind of like a, what do you call it? When you're that, um, when you're that guy, it's just, you can't help it. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Um, I, what you call it? I hope he's able to kind of get his channel back uniques. Um, hope he's able to come back and do his thing. Um, I think it's horrible. Uh, I think this kind of bullying and silencing of creators is despicable, really. Um, so much so now, this guy wrote a really cool article about it, actually detailing the whole affair here. That I'll quickly read out, but courtesy of a website called calfkicker.com. It says, Counterculture hater Brendan Schaub is suing a small YouTuber. This, and they you know, used one of the worst photos of Brendan as well. They're looking inflamed, full of grease and sugar and whatever else and whiskey um it's continuity i said brennan shop has the most interesting career trajectory notwithstanding his meteoric meteoric rise in popularity and exposure in the last few years shop star has fallen drastically in recent months once the host of two showtime podcasts he is now struggling to make ends meet on his newly founded thick boy on his YouTube house network, Shaw currently features podcasts from various supporting characters in the T5K universe. His visual podcast, in addition to hosting a reboot of Joe Rogan's Fight Companion called Calabasas Fight Companion. Joe Rogan is not involved. The only redeeming factor of his network, in terms of the numbers, is the said fight companion and this is mostly due to shop's heavy reliance on cancelled comedian chris D'Elia to prop up his numbers prior to getting cancelled over his snapchat and dm to various minors <laughs> billy has been gurning acting career in addition to his own youtube channel of 518k um the chris D'Elia thing man is incredible because that guy is legitimately like holding up that entire network like let's no make no bones about it like because he's actual box office like podcast box office like wherever he goes numbers go like he still still even off the back of all of that um controversy and stuff and you know crazy allegations and whatnot he's still able to pull 100k views like on average on these podcasts like crazy right which is pretty which is saying something and when he goes on t5k he has such good rapport with brian callum you know especially all those um 10 minute podcast fans come out in droves as well to watch them have their thing brendan awkwardly tries to you know clutch his way in there so you really do wonder what would happen for t for the fire and the kid um or sorry for the thick boy what you call it network if chris Lear wasn't associated with it and now obviously they brought him into the king of the sting as well it was quite a smart move by brendan to be fair that bringing on chris Lear, we have to give him props on that one like bringing chris Lear was one of the smartest things he's ever done there it continues to say by the community of those who do not like Shaw but just keeps growing a subreddit dedicated to his oldest venture the podcast of fire and the kid has more than doubled in its size since june 2020 filled with mma fans and those interested in podcasts it's most dedicated to posting various gaffes of Shaw's day in and day out podcasting without the patronage of joe rogan Shaw is often forced to reinvent the wheel in order to gin up interest in his brand however pivoting from one controversial take to another can lead to unintended if not sometimes comical results in the last latest attempt of contradictory petitions in spite of heaping praise on spotify anti-work ceo last month Shaw was reportedly attempted to censor a small channel dedicated to reacting to his own content great point this guy made yeah because he sure went on his flipping joe rogan you know sucker for fun which again i make makes sense because the guy legitimately gave him a career he took away one career and gave him another career right he took away his ufc career but he gave him a, this podcasting career so i understand sucking him off but he was going you know so happy on the whole like oh daniel Eck for being against the woke culture and being uncancelable and this nonsense but then he wants to then cancel somebody or silence them because he doesn't like what they have to say it's just like pick a lane papa it continues recently a creator named um Un uh, unique niece uniqueness lost his main channel uniqueness thanks to the copyright strikes he received from Shaw, and he is now being sued during a three minute video on his new channel the creators share some bits of the law sort of the thick boy productions creator inc reportedly being sued for copyright infringement the channel uniques has reportedly been struck from the posting of video of Shaw's exchanging a phone number with a young lady while his infraction is nothing compared to the trouble the comedians um buddies get into um exactly christian and brian can is currently married and has two kids this explains a lot though isn't it this explains a lot of them because do you remember there was a time when um what's his face remember when i told yeah remember i think i mentioned on the podcast there was a time when flipping brian callant was going to sue the husband of the person that accused him of the r word right and the premise of it was all uh, because the husband was going on a tear calling up all the places that brian callum was meant to be performing at and getting his shows cancelled for him right and he was like no you're taking business you're taking food out of my kid's mouth you're not preventing me to making an income blah blah blah, blah. 
there's some you know you could say there he's got maybe some room there in terms of yeah you just can't go around like you know basically trying to destroy my career in that direct of, of, of a way if it happens indirectly as a consequence of people reporting on my case so be it but you just calling up people directly and harassing them is just not on fair cool but in terms of optics that is a crazy move to make insane move and also shows a real lack of self-awareness and a real lack of humility understanding and even now forget the, the brand kind thing let's say he didn't think he did it right he definitely doesn't think he did it he definitely doesn't think he did the r word or he you know um essayed these ladies cool but four of them came out and shared their stories right and you never once heard him speak with any kind of compassion um regarding them regarding issues surrounding consent and anything it was all just like completely made up no this is false nothing and just completely moved on like nothing happened of course a lot of things happen after that you know you kind of you know separate from no that separation from his um ex-wife thing happened maybe before that but still it's been a whirlwind of things for him and it separation um cancellation then hooking up with this new person that he's with now at the moment having a child and he's like 55 like mad anyway whatever cool do you no judgment on that regard it's not my business but it kind of makes sense in it if one person can sue the husband of the r word accuser because he feels like that person is impacting his ability to make money when actually maybe you allegedly r wording people is impacting your ability to make money more so it's not too far away from somebody like a brendan deciding to sue a small youtuber because they decided to highlight a video, a live stream, right? Again, Brendan Schaub is most, it must be the most unlucky doof that exists in the world, isn't it? He's the only person that could go on a live stream, you know, um, with Tyson, Brandon Marshall, and I forgot who the other person, oh, um, Daniel Cormier, right? And get completely shown up, right? Everyone kind of was basically laughing at him on a live stream. Couldn't really hang with the guys, which is, again, ironic, and he tries to go on about how alpha he is and how big dog he is, but when he's actually around actual alphas right actual people who don't need anything from him he doesn't know how to hang he doesn't necessarily know how to vibe he's not necessarily cool or anything so he kind of was a bit off in that regard fine no problem and of course there's some you know weird energy between him and tyson because of all the stuff he said about tyson in the past and then suddenly he comes on food truck diaries and he starts gargling his nuts i'm sure tyson's been made aware after the fact of what brendan should said about him beforehand um but then he's the most unlucky person because I don't know why that happened, but I guess because it was filmed in some really swanky uh, um, mansion somewhere in the Hollywood Hills, they were doing these like shots that like showed the whole house because I guess that's what they're, they're doing the live stream of when they're watching the Super Bowl. Um, that's why that's why I mentioned this whole like Brian Cannon, Brendan Schaub and Mike Tyson things happening. And they had this shot where they were kind of showing you the entirety of the, of the place where the live stream was happening. And for whatever reason, at that very moment, they were showing that clip or that shot um brendan um walks up to he's walking and kind of doing his whole like weird kind of i don't know seduction walk um towards a group of people sitting down there's a girl there and he taps one of the ladies on there who doesn't necessarily look very voluptuous or anything which is just the interesting part because you you're like oh why does happen alpha because she looks quite small because he's always talking about girls with massive bums and obviously his girl's got a really you know um huge derriere so that's the first one that caught me off guard. So I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. I guess he's he's into all types. And then they have a little conversation and he slips or something, a number or something, who knows, a bit of paper, and he walks off. But it's all, it all gets caught on camera. And then he does this weird that kind of look back thing, trying to be, I don't know what happens there, but it's all caught on camera, right? So it's, it's it obviously looks bad. Um, we don't know what happened. It's not our business. Who, who really cares? But it's something to laugh about, legitimately something to laugh about. Or if you're smart and it is something really... Um, problematic you don't talk about it at all and you hope it goes away so that your actual girl doesn't see it right and that people just move on that's what you hope is going to happen you do what joe rogan does you pretend it doesn't it didn't happen and just continue motoring on but for whatever reason he decided again this is such the wrong time to do it. he said off the back of that to then go and do the lawsuit which then you think about it, moments prior to that this whole annie lederman thing happened right on her show where she was like talking about how all um you know alleged allegedly you know the whole like walk me to my truck thing happened i just can't i just for the life of me can't understand how this guy like i can't for the life of me understand this guy's um decision making process i'm just like like why, why do you decide to do these things in succession like why would you do this why why would you do this or maybe he's true maybe he doesn't because he always says this all the time that he doesn't um 
that he doesn't think Majiggy. That he doesn't read comments, right? Maybe it's true. He doesn't read comments. Maybe, maybe it's true. He doesn't read comments, and he clearly doesn't know what's going on out there. But the perception of him hasn't been the best. But yeah, I won't read the entire article because you know I've already been rambling already for a minute here about this whole thing. But yeah, I hope Unix gets his channel back. Totally disgusting move from Brendan. Again, not surprised. Um, I'm not surprised personally. I think maybe some of you guys might be, but I'm definitely not surprised that he would have done something like this. I think this is always on the cards for someone like a Brendan Shaw. But, um, he's impervious to criticism. Um, somebody who clearly doesn't really understand or get why people hate him. Um, he clearly thinks he's the smartest person in the room all the time when he clearly is the dumbest. Um, and in general, has been the one sole reason why i stopped listening to the podcast obviously brian Callum's a close second he starts to get really annoying towards the end but he's bearable because he's funny but you know that's basically what happens you, you be annoying if you want to but just be funny and these guys weren't funny they took themselves too seriously the whole covid thing as well was horrible to us from afar the way they were kind of um you know conducting themselves during the height of covid was just embarrassing to say the least um but yeah He's the main reason why people turned up on the show. Brendan is the main reason why most people are detractors or why most people are haters, as he likes to say. Honestly, it's the main reason why. And he hasn't, for whatever reason, come to grips with it. It's something that he still kind of, not say denies, but it just doesn't. It's for whatever reason. He can't necessarily just figure out why people hate him, change the things about him that people hate, or just, I don't know, double down on it. I don't know, do something do something i don't know i don't know i don't know i really don't know about this guy honestly i'm sure oh is it my thing froze 